Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Wichita Foundation to restore classic Lear 23. Dark Arrow prototype nears flight testing. FAA investigating BOS close call. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Wichita Foundation to restore classic Lear 23. The first Learjet to be delivered by Bill Lear's upstart company to a paying customer has returned to its Wichita birthplace, where a group of aviation enthusiasts have set forth their commitment to return the jet to airworthiness. The aircraft, a Lear 23 serial number 23003, registration November 200 Yankee, was manufactured in 1964 and is the third specimen of the sleek LR-23 to grace this world. Regrettably, the little jet, prior to its rescue by the newly formed Classic Learjet Foundation, suffered a long and miserable interval deteriorating on the ramp of Florida's Bartow Executive Airport. Classic Learjet Foundation spokesman Rick Rowe stated, quote, We are going to restore this airplane and then we're going to connect. We're going to connect to keep the story alive of the jet that started the industry by preserving this piece of legendary flight history, end quote. A former Learjet demo pilot, Mr. Rowe has logged upwards of 9,000 hours in various Learjet models. November 200 Yankee was transported from BOW to Wichita Dwight D. Eisenhower National Airport via a flatbed trailer. The 26-hour haul concluded on February 28th. The foundation has yet to raise roughly $70,000 of the $90,000 it agreed to pay 23003's previous owner prior to the commencement of restoration efforts. Mr. Rowe said, quote, it isn't completely paid for and we can't really start the restoration until we get it paid for, end quote. And after the break, DOT Inspector General to investigate Buttigieg. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Unbridled passion, unequaled performance, unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor a commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some other interesting stories. DOT Inspector General to investigate Buttigieg. The DOT Inspector General is opening an audit into Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg over the latter's extensive use of taxpayer-funded private jets. Buttigieg, who has repeatedly argued in favor of aggressive action to combat climate change, has taken at least 18 private jet flights at taxpayer expense. Copies of publicly available flight records were obtained by government watchdog group Americans for Public Trust. APT Executive Director Caitlin Sutherland stated, quote, After Americans for Public Trust helped determine Secretary Buttigieg's excessive use of taxpayer-funded government jets, we are pleased to see that his air travel is now under investigation, end quote. Cirrus Chief Engineer Killed in SR-22 Accident on Friday, February 24th, approximately four minutes after departing Duluth International Airport, a six-year-old Cirrus SR-22 GTS G6 registration November 929 Delta Romeo went down into the frozen St. Louis River near Bong Bridge. The aircraft broke through the ice and partially submerged. The airplane's sole occupant, Dave Rathbun, 52, lost his life. November 929 Delta Romeo attained an altitude of 1,125 feet MSL and a ground speed of approximately 130 knots. Cirrus confirmed the victim was in fact Dave Rathbun, a highly regarded aerospace engineer and 26-year Cirrus employee who played key roles in the early design and certification of Cirrus's SR-20, 22, and 22T. 
Delta Pilots Approve New Contract The Delta Airlines Master Executive Council, represented by the Airline Pilots Association International, reported that 78% of Delta Pilots had voted in favor of a new comprehensive working agreement. Subject agreement includes over $7 billion in cumulative increases over the coming four years. Additionally, Delta Pilots, by a margin of 90%, voted in favor of a letter of agreement that safeguards Delta Pilots' jobs against international flying by Delta's partner airlines. 96% of Delta's eligible pilot cadre participated in the voting. Rare World War II target drone to be displayed Nampa, Idaho's Spirit of Flight Foundation Museum announced that a rare World War II-era Culver target drone had been donated to the museum's collection. Spirit of Flight Foundation President Gordon Page said, quote, We have had a Culver PQ-14 target drone on our wish list for years, but there aren't many left of the over 3,000 built, end quote. In 1940, the U.S. Army Air Corps requisitioned a radio-controlled target drone to aid in the training of anti-aircraft artillery gunners. Culver answered the call with the PQ-14, sometimes called the Turkey. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Dark Arrow's prototype nears flight testing. Dark Arrow 1, a single reciprocating engine, low-wing retractable tricycle undercarriage, normal category airplane, finished February 2023, focused on the sleek aircraft's landing gear actuation hardware and flight test planning. The gearboxes by which the Dark Arrow 1's main landing gear are retracted and extended were built in February. Each gearbox contains a clutch mechanism by which the corresponding drive motor is disengaged from the gear strut. This architecture allows the Dark Arrow 1 struts to extend under gravity with the assistance of gas springs. Initial testing of the system was performed with off-the-shelf gas springs. However, a set of custom gas springs that better meet the specific requirements for force, stroke length, and damping was ultimately ordered. The Dark Arrow 1's landing gear actuation motors are controlled by a module that contains a motor speed controller, relay, and logic board. Previously, the electrical hardware components in the control module were validated through bench tests. The Dark Arrow team has also been working with test pilot Sean Van Hatten to refine the airplane's flight testing itinerary, which includes review of the Dark Arrow 1's center of gravity envelope, critical V-speeds, and airports of interest in the flight testing area. Installation and testing of the Dark Arrow 1's main landing gear actuation system will continue through March 2023. A number of miscellaneous tasks pertaining to the aircraft's control system and cabin also remain to be completed. And after these messages, FAA investigating BOS close call. Are you tired of tucking your phone under your headset to make a call and having cords and adapters strewn about the cockpit? Experience wireless cell phone communications and your personal music with Pilot Communications Blue Link 2. Blue Link 2 gives you a wearable link to two Bluetooth enabled devices at the same time and can even control your phone and music. Use Blue Link 2 with your existing headset or a Pilot Communications headset from pilot-usa.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. FAA investigating BOS close call. The FAA is investigating a close call between a Hoppa Jet Learjet 60 registration November 280 Lima Juliet and an Embraer E190 operating as JetBlue Flight 206 at Boston Logan International Airport. The February 27th incident saw the LR60 depart BOS runway 9 without clearance as the E190 touched down on the BOS runway 4 right. The two runways intersect near their respective touchdown points. In a post-incident statement, the FAA reported, quote, An air traffic controller instructed the pilot of the Learjet to line up and wait on runway 9 while the JetBlue Embraer 190 landed on runway 4 right, which intersects runway 9. The Learjet pilot read back the instructions clearly but began a takeoff roll instead, end quote. The Learjet 60 was departing BOS with a destination of Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. The LR-60 reportedly taxied to runway 9 with instructions to line up and wait pending arrival of JetBlue Flight 206, which was on final approach to BOS runway 4 right. However, instead of holding in position as directed by ATC, the Learjet commenced its takeoff roll. At 18.54 EST, the LR-60 entered the intersection of runways 9 and 4 right at a ground speed of 82 knots. 
16 one hundredths of a second prior to the LR60 entering the runway 9 for right intersection. JetBlue Flight 206 passed the runway 4 right number markings at a ground speed of 132 knots and 531 feet away. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.